Okay. Uh, I will call this meeting of Senate County Commissioners to order for Thursday, August 12th. Uh, I guess you can please join me in the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. 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 Dear God, thank you for a beautiful day bringing us together. Thank you for last week uh, fair, uh, this week fair in uh, Attica, and uh, bringing our youth and, and communities together. Um, we ask that you look over this meeting and guide us in our decisions. Amen. 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 Thank you very much. Okay. Roll call, Kylie. Commissioner Kirshner? Here. Commissioner Perdiso? Here. Commissioner Shaw? Here. All right. Uh, administrator, what do we have to say today? Uh, I'll skip mine today. All right. Commissioner Shuff, you're on. Yeah, I had a, had a busy week here. Um, on Wednesday, we did our Seneca County sweep. Uh, this week, we did uh, Republic, which was nice. Um, I'd like to thank Ben Nutter for uh, giving us one of the roll offs, which was provided by Sonic. Uh, Mayor Jeff Larrick stopped out. We ended up filling that thing, so it was a good turnout for that. And got the community out and did, uh, did a nice job of sweeping up the downtown and the curbs and all that. Um, we also took a visit to Delaware for our Main Street Committee yesterday for the uh, Downtown Development Committee for Tiffin. Um, so what we'll do is once a year is we kind of go on these different visits to different Main Street communities, kind of see what they're doing, what works, what doesn't work, collaborate with the others, and uh, kind of brainstorm. So it was a very good uh, road trip yesterday, good session. Took a lot from it, so that was a good visit. Um, also met with Bettsville Mayor Scott Harrison uh, last week. We went out to Quarry, trying to brainstorm ways to maybe get that back open, improve that park. Um, There's a lot of ideas exchanged to that, but uh, I'll keep you guys posted as we uh, come up with more developments and do some homework on that. Um, also, this weekend we have the Seneca County Brewery Tour. Um, that was uh, also kind of nice to be working on here the last few weeks, seeing the two chambers work together, Destination Seneca County, all the different breweries, but uh, kind of give people a taste of Seneca County and give them something to do and a safe way to get there and back, but uh, something kind of different here to try out. And then later today, I'll be out at the AMBETS. They're having their uh, Veteran of the Year Award, so um, after 5 o'clock, I'll be out there to kind of uh, represent the Commissioner's Office on that. That's about all I have. Okay. Uh, I I missed the minutes, so I'll accept the motion to approve the video, audio, or digital recording, please. So move. Second. All right. Commissioner Schaff? Yes. Commissioner Paradiso? Yes. Commissioner Kirshner? Yes. Okay. Commissioner Paradiso. Moving right along here. I see. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Uh, a few things. Uh, we want to uh, uh, congratulate the city of Bellevue and recognize them. Uh, as they are now a Purple Heart City. Uh, it's pretty neat to see some veterans in the back. So uh, talk to Mayor Strucker over there, and I believe there's only 34 cities in the state of Ohio that are actually recognized as Purple Heart uh, cities. Um, they had a presentation, a ceremony on uh, Saturday, August 7th, um, and I, I drove down to the cemetery, saw the memorial. It's, it's pretty, it's pretty impressive. So I want to congratulate them and salute our veterans uh, for that um, hard work. Also, we received a uh, grant, a thirty-two thousand dollar grant. Did we talk about that last week? Nope, it came in after uh, ARP grant for the airport. Um, so we want to uh, thank uh, Sherrod Brown's office for putting that together. Um, I'm sure that money will go to good use, right, Stacey? Mm -hmm. And that's, so that was nice to get that. Um, we, uh, a, uh, we were talking broadband, <coughs> excuse me, we were discussing broadband throughout the, the county. And there are a lot of moving parts. There are various vendors, um, initiatives going on. We formed a task force, it's, it's been documented. Um, we, uh, We'll be meeting on the 23rd 
Um, but I do want to announce to the, the commissioners that in the timing on this is it's kind of accelerated on their part and a little awkward on our part because we've been out um, and so um, but we've had a uh, provider um, come to us that wants to partner for a federal grant and um, so the documents have been sent to Derek uh, and I before we get into it I want to meet with Derek um, and clarify a few things but through the discussions I've had and David Zach have had um, this appears to uh, potentially be a good thing for the county um, this would be a NTIA broadband grant opportunity um, and a private carrier needs to partner with somebody in the county it's uh, uh, we understand that we have a variety of uh, carriers in the county this would be um, uh, a federal grant nobody's applied for this specific grant uh, they've asked us to uh, um, they need a, a partner a, a county or government entity to partner with by right, David yeah. and they've asked us uh, and um, you know I asked them to proceed with some more information and of course um, we're at that point so uh, don't really want to uh, not recommend any any action or not but uh, we could this could come up next meeting um, so if anybody has any questions or uh, you know I, I can you can call Derek and talk to him and so forth but um, I kind of like it I think uh, we'll see I mean until I read the documents I think that's your position right David we want to kind of but so far everything looks favorable in my mind mm -hmm. so. yeah if anybody has any additional questions you can call me too yeah you can call David directly good you're good yeah that's it okay Thanks. well we uh, a few of us in the room here showed up at the uh, attic affair opening nine o'clock uh, Tuesday morning uh, great morning I fought off the rain and, uh, and and got it done this morning we were at the uh, new educators breakfast uh, president Rob Huntington from Heidelberg University was a keynote speaker introduced all the all the uh, new uh, educators uh, both in high schools and the, and the universities um, Tuesday was a relatively busy day we had uh, high bridge here to talk about uh, our hopes and dreams for uh, capital improvements we kind of listed those in priority and then uh, went over to the front nine in Bestville met with all the trustees and a representative uh, talk to the from the from the trustees association talk to that group about how they can apply for the rescue American rescue uh, funds money and what kinds of things qualified and what kinds of things didn't like Ditto and Spencer were also there to answer any questions from the trustees um, and then tomorrow we have the NCO ESC kickoff of uh, educators educators as well and that's at the Ritz so that'll be a big welcome ceremony tomorrow. Um, I will uh, defer on the PowerPoint because we're getting close to the time when Paul, and respect for his time, Paul has a presentation as it relates to uh, funding. Yes. One more, I do have one more comment, sorry. Uh, but I want to recognize uh, two individuals from the county that went in the Ag Hall of Fame. I had this setting here and I, I, I didn't read it, so Don, Hutzel and Carl Miller were in, in, uh, inducted into the uh, County Hall of Fame. Uh, the AT had a great article on Tuesday um, listing their accomplishments. Um, and it's pretty impressive to read, you know, their history and what they've done. And we want to congratulate them and their contribution to our county. So uh, thank you. That's uh, sure. Don Hutzel and Carl Miller. Thank you. Sorry. And not to forget about the veterans of the veteran of the year uh, tonight. Yeah. celebration tonight. Uh, that's at the end. That's um, I, Tyler, I think you said five. I, I got six, but anyway, I'm sure that uh, between five and six is one. Five o'clock somewhere. Yeah, it's got to be five o'clock somewhere. So, so with that, hour. Treasurer Harrison, what do you got for us? Uh, <clears throat> thank you. This morning I have uh, a stack of papers this? here that you all need to review and sign it came to my attention back in June actually that um, 
even though we're supposed to have agreements for depository signed every four years and renewed with the banks that uh, would like to be designated as such, uh, there hadn't been anything done since 2009. And so um, we went ahead and uh, advertised for those, I don't know, what, two, three weeks ago maybe? Yeah. Um, yeah, okay. Yeah, now I remember why I went here. <laughs> and it's worse. Uh, so we did get, and I am recommending that we accept uh, five of those, the five, actually all five that bid, uh, the Old Ford Bank, U.S. Bank, Huntington Bank, First Bank of Tiffin, and Fifth Third. And uh, then we'll will be legal again for it. Not that we were illegal, but we'll have those in effect then for another four years. So, so your concern, one of your concerns was the fact that the service charges were more than the interest we were receiving. Yeah, so that's kind of a different, that's what made me find these. Because okay. we are looking at possibly changing the bank that we do most of our business with. We aren't there yet. This is just housekeeping. Then, this is just housekeeping yeah. for depositories, okay, which good. also needed to be done in order for those banks to qualify to, if we would choose one of them to be our regular bank. So it was kind of a two-folded thing. This is the first step. Okay. So, so you're still weighing out we're in, where we we're, put the big yeah, account, right? We're in the process of finding out um, how things could transition okay. and uh, then we would have a significant savings in service charges and, and actually start earning some interest again too. So, so I, would, I would recommend and encourage you to sign those. I've got, I think I've got everything red flag. Some of them need more than one signature, so make sure you catch all those while you're doing it. We've got, yeah, we've got that in the resolution, mm -hmm. right? So okay. we'll get that done. Thank Thanks, you. Paula. Thanks. That's what I got. Thank you. Okay, Jimmy, uh, since you know, emergency management services is such a big issue for us, I know that we went this over this PowerPoint uh, last <coughs> Tuesday, uh, but but I do think it's important, or not last Tuesday, the 5th, last Thursday, uh, I think it's important enough that we do a quick review uh, of what direction we're heading. We have uh, Ken here who can kind of fill in some of the blanks that we have, and I think we have some clarifications we want to make. Stacy has control of the PowerPoint, just so you know. Okay. Let's see if I can get it to get a full screen. So the way that we presented it when we did it at the... Um, My volume came off. Is that better? We're good. Yep. Sorry about that. It's all right. The way that we did it when we presented it uh, to, the, to the ambulance districts was that we kind of, um, Tony and I kind of went from one to the other uh, in, in um, again, respect for your time. We're going to go through this very quickly. If there are any questions, Jimmy, either from the audience or uh, from the, the folks here, we'll stop and answer those. But we are going to flip through this very quickly. So uh, if you want to start at the stage. So what we, want, what we want to do is make sure that we're providing, uh, you know, uh, uh, reaching our goal of getting to people within 10 minutes with professional service. Uh, we have to emphasize the fact that, you know, the volunteer uh, folks, the number um, and the time that they spend has been decreasing steadily. The one thing that I wanted out here that we didn't talk about is this would have, uh, well, we'll talk about it in service. So we don't currently have uh, financial resources for sources for full-time squads, but uh, we've got some money that we might be able to use. Uh, every ambulance district right now is in their position when it comes to money volunteers. Um, and we do want to find a solution and uh, do it by finding it with the least amount of drama. And I think that we all agreed that those points uh, were uh, okay with everyone to talk. Tony, go ahead. So then we uh, reviewed the financial resources that are uh, in place. I must uh, note that uh, Julie Atkins, our auditor, was on the phone and our prosecutor, Derek Devine, was present. So we had uh, them there to uh, validate what we said and answer any questions. But um, between the four EMS districts, there's a million two carryover. 
uh, going into this year, and uh, there's 829,000 of tax revenue already coming in. And when we add Adams Pleasant and Green Springs, their tax <coughs> revenue, uh, assuming they would come into this new form district, we'd have over a million dollars of uh, revenue. So uh, the group, as it sat, had over a million dollars of revenue and a million two in the bank. Uh, the, the Township Trustees Commissioners are setting on American Rescue Plan money. Um, and uh, we do have contracts between the county and all the districts of the same contract uh, in place where um, it spells out what each party does. And uh, we also wanted to make note that the commissioners have invested uh, uh, much money uh, in the past and to date into EMS and we're committed uh, to do that going forward uh, as we all try to work together and um, um, tackle this problem. Okay. I, I think there's two, two important points to be made here. The first is that the million two in carryover will not be used for anything but ambulance services, emergency medical services. I think there's some confusion about that might be put into a pot of money for other purposes. The fact is that money is specifically designated for emergency management services. People are paying millage in each of the townships for that money. That money needs to be used for that. That is non-discretionary. That's what the money is to be used for. Our money, and by the hour I mean all of our money, Sunday County residents, general fund money, county money, is discretionary. We can decide how much, if any, we want to put into the ambulance service. So just want to make it very clear that we're not asking for anything more than what taxpayers have voted for. The taxpayers voted a million dollars over a year in use for emergency management services. And that million two is carryover money from a levy that they voted for to provide <coughs> emergency management services. That money needs to be used for emergency management services. There is no reason of which we can come up with that there needs to be a carryover. What we want to make sure of is that we have as many people on the road as often as possible. So getting down that carryover, it's a million two. Uh, simply said, how many stated 829 a year plus uh, uh, Adams Green Springs, which is another uh, about 300, yeah. about 300 so, so a little bit over a million dollars uh, that we have in operating expenses. We have determined that it will be approximately, and again, there's a lot of bugs to work out, uh, Adams Green Springs, for example, has a, has a two and a half mil levy on. Um, and uh, to get to where we need to be, it's going to be about three mils across the county. And three mils, as I have been instructed and educated on, is about $105 for a $100,000 house. So in most cases, it won't be near that because there's already millage on the books. So the increase will be something like that. Okay. Yeah, this just says, uh, kind of talks about the contract. Basically, the county uh, provides medical director, the administration, the vehicles, communication equipment, medical supplies, training. We handle the billing, collections, reporting, and the joint ambulance districts basically provide the personnel, which are uh, volunteers. This is, this is a, an area of real concern, right? Um, and I think that I'll let, you, I'll let the numbers speak for themselves. As I said, I wrote a little, little article on the paper this morning. Uh, I think that the average was someplace about 30%, I don't remember exactly, Jimmy, for uh, 2021 so far, yeah. it was like 25%. Anyways, it continues to increase on a rolling average. Some are in service more often, some less, but it needs to be noted the 2021 figures include four full-time people that can us hire. So if those people weren't inserted in the mix, those out-of-service numbers would increase dramatically. Uh, 96 hours a week. Yes, sir. That's what those four work. So, you know, you take that 96 hours out, I'm not saying that none of them would be filled by volunteers, but I'm saying that a large portion of them probably would not be. So uh, this is a little skewed. Uh, on the side of uh, in-service because, because inserting four full-time people since 2020 
has increased the amount of in-service, while the overall, even doing that, the overall downtime is worse. It should be noted that Bloomville, Republic, and Attica now are one district. And um, another way to describe out of service, Ken, we were talking, uh, if we had six vehicles, right, six mm -hmm. squads parked throughout the county and the phone rang and only two were able to, to run, that means we have four that are out of service. Yes, and, uh, and there's no telling which of those two is going to be in service at yeah. any one time. And you just don't know until the phone rings. Exactly. Right. So uh, that's the situation that we're in. And and that's another reason why it's important to strategically place those stations geographically in the county. Absolutely. So that uh, even if one is down, the other one's not so far away that it can't get there or the echo unit can't help. Um, we want to make certain that, our, that, you know, if you're in Gutsville, if you're in Bascomer, if you're in Republic, and you have an incident, you're taken care of with the same level of service as you would if you were in Tiffin or Pastoria. That's not the case right now. So we need to make certain that becomes the case. Mm -hmm. Let's go to the next one. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Uh, so make a comment here uh, that uh, uh, when we say countywide system, states, can you go to the next slide? Sure. Maybe. Uh, one more. Well, I'm going to go to the map one more and then we'll oh. back up. Okay. I'm sorry, right here. So when we discuss, when the commissioners discuss a countywide EMS system, and Commissioner, you referenced this in your uh, letter to the editor. I think it's just really important to understand that the commissioners, we obviously take a, a county view and perspective of things. With 15 townships, six villages, two cities, uh, that's a lot of geographic area. But when we talk about a countywide system, we are not including Faustoria, the city of Tiffin, and Clinton Township. So if we take them out, those three entities, that's over 50% of the population. Currently, Eden Township and Thompson, where you see uh, with the lines, they are not part of the four EMS districts that we're talking about, or uh, Adams Pleasant uh, Townships and Green Springs. So 78.54% of the county without Thompson, Eden, Clinton, the city of Faustoria, and Tiffin is really uh, who we're talking about in forming one district in the county. That would be a new uh, countywide district, dot, 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 in that area, countywide. Uh, we have invited Eden and Thompson Townships to the, they have, they have uh, EMS in place, but they are uh, interested in what's going on. They want to be part of the process, so they're also involved. So that would be uh, what we describe as a countywide system. Back to Commissioner Kirshner's point, in our county we have 10 volunteer fire departments, and we have six villages. And not every, volunteer, every fire department can have EMS, that's not what we do. And every village can't have EMS. So back to your slide, Stacy. We've proposed a four squad or three squad model where throughout the county we would build three squads or we would have four squads strategically placed in that, uh, that pink shaded magenta area uh, that uh, would be cost effective because it's a lot more cost effective to run three or four squads than it is six or more. Um, and back to Commissioner Kirshner's point, um, a uh, four squad model would cost 3.2 million to run. Uh, it would generate, a three mil levy would generate about 2.7. Uh, the commissioners are allocating mm -hmm. five to 750,000 a year towards this. Uh, so that's how a four squad model could potentially be funded, assuming um, everyone were to participate. Uh, if fewer districts decide not to come in, 
that would have to be revisited as to a uh, three squad, two squad uh, model and uh, where they would be located and what type of revenue we would have would, would have to be recalculated. But this was a um, an accurate statement, assuming everybody came in and we built three or four squads. Yeah, I mean, we're standing on the shoulders of a lot of people who have done a lot of work for a long time. This is not a new concept. This is not a new idea. Uh, Ken worked on a, uh, as, as early as 2011, I think. Uh, the plan came into effect 2013 or something. We've revisited it a number of times. A number of townships have said, you know, let's go full time 365 seven. And uh, we said we can't afford it. I mean, that's been, uh, and, and the three million bucks, you can afford it. You know, you go from putting $700,000 into putting $3 million in, that, uh, that will uh, play with your budget a bit. But with the American Rescue Plan money, some of it can be designated to put buildings up, we hope. And with the fact that we, if we include Green Springs and Adams in this scenario, uh, you know, we've got uh, a significant amount of money that's being generated now. It would need to be supplemented and the, and the county until so such time as we're able to get it fully funded, would subsidize it uh, to make certain that we had full-time squads across the county. And as Commissioner Paradiso said, we're not sure if everybody's going to come along. So uh, we are going to do a countywide ambulance service for those ambulance districts that want to participate. If they don't want to participate, again, you know, we'll remind them that they're going to need a medical director and administrator and uh, vehicles and uh, equipment, etc. But if they don't, uh, then it'll the, the configuration of where the uh, stations are would change, and the number would change, as we talked about. Good. Um, next slide. Yeah. Okay. So this talks a little bit about uh, the relationship and the partnership we have, and. Um, you know, the, the commissioners are taking the lead in quarterbacking this process and holding the meetings, but it's truly, um, uh, we need everybody's involved. We're set up where, for example, um, Attica, Venice, and Reed Township had their own EMS district. Bloomville, uh, Republic, Bloom Township, Scipio Township, they had their own EMS district. Uh, they merged. They got together and merged. So together, they're better than they were separately. Um, and what we're trying to do is just, just keep that concept going, get everybody to merge and be uh, one big district because we can just, it's more cost effective, more efficient, and we can all control our own destiny. You know, the county and the county commissioners that will come after us are going to be here forever. And if we can make this a county system and bring it in, we're all going to be able to control our own destiny versus outsourcing EMS or worse yet, not providing EMS because you don't have the volunteers or resources to do it. So we're trying to get out ahead of it. Um, these are tough decisions, but it's also exciting to be able to uh, uh, have the resources, have everybody in the room, and, and have the tone of the room, which I, I would say is uh, uh, very cordial, very positive. Uh, it wasn't always that way. So I think everyone's coming to the table with hopes. Uh, the devil will be in the details. Um, and again, we will continue to uh, meet. We have uh, monthly meetings scheduled indefinitely the first Thursday of the month with the people we're talking about. And uh, these are public meetings and we hope to continue to uh, move this process forward. Um, yeah, I, I don't know how my many closing remarks are what we have, but I think we made our point. So, you know, we've, we've uh, been through this for a long time. We understand that there are a number of nuances that we don't know about. As Tony said, the devil will be indeed in the details. There, there are a number of uh, issues. You have to understand that we have six or seven ambulance districts now, and they all are in a different position. And they all have a different number of volunteers, they all have different kinds of equipment, they all have different skill levels. So 
you know, to be able to herd those all together and make sure everybody understands and has, it's developing a culture now, right? It's developing a sense of uh, unity. Uh, as the sheriff mentioned, this year it would be a lot easier to have two or three stations, one to call it a dispatcher, than be confused about where the call needs to go. So there are going to be some efficiencies and some real positives. But there are, I mean, we're not kidding ourselves. You know, there are going to be some negatives and there's going to be some pushback and there's going to be some areas that uh, aren't as accepting as others, for lack of a better way of saying it. We hope that everybody comes in and we hope that the end product is a ambulance service, countywide, carbon out, what we talked about, that's professional, that's efficient, um, and that everybody can be proud of. That's our hope. That's good. I think that's, I think we killed that. Yeah. Can I, can I <laughs> yes, say? Yes, please, uh, please. I'll stand me so the camera can see me without showing it off my head. <laughs> there's a, uh, there's two giant details that are, that are we, we kind of gloss over. One is scalability. So this doesn't have to be four squads tomorrow, and it can't be. We don't have the money. So one thing I think a lot of folks are confused about in the public is that we're going to throw away all the volunteers, and we're just going to go to four full-time paid squads tomorrow. That's unrealistic, but we do have a scalable system. If we can afford, and it depends on who's in, who the players are at the table, one squad, two squads, three squads, or four, Realistically speaking, I don't believe we're ever going to need more than four, but if we have some volunteer squads that are strong, and I'll say the word new real, because they are, and they'll be volunteers long after I'm dead, buried in a dried up corpse, because they have that strong of a community. Uh, not everybody is fortunate enough to have that, so the next thing it is, is cost. Everybody's like, why does it cost $3.2 million? Well, simply put, there's been a lot of work put into that, not only by me, but by several agencies at the state level, and also this young lady sitting right here. Uh, we've done research from from the river to the lake, um, 34 third service EMS agencies to find out how much an average it costs to have one full-time squad on the road and then multiply that by four. If anybody, and I mean anybody, can find it done cheaper the right way, please show it to me. And we're not talking about fire-based EMS because that's more expensive. We're not talking about hospital-based EMS because that doesn't really exist anymore. So there's really only two options. Third service EMS, which is what we've been for 43 years, and then private contracting. There's a reason why privates exist and they do work, but they don't get cheaper and they may not be here because they're a private business owned and may leave or get bought by a larger corporation and change their business model. So those, that's what we're talking about, cost and scalability. I think what we're gonna do is superior, and that's as evidenced by all the research that you can look up, uh, and I would I appreciate it. I think the professional tone of this meeting and the professional tone of the meeting on the 5th was excellent, but there's a lot of things happening on a personal level that I hope people can keep it above board. Because my family and me personally are not a part of this. It has absolutely nothing to do with me or you. We are not the future of this system. Our children are. And it's important to remember that before they start taking personal shots at me. I appreciate your time. Thank you. Yeah, I think one of the points that's missed too is that it can go through the litany of ways it can happen. In any form of government, I think you want to try to be self-governed, right? So in this situation, it would be, um, you know, the vision would be that there would be an ambulance district board that would be local people from those districts, from the county, that would actually make the decisions as we move forward. So I think that's important. Rather than somebody trying to cram down what it is they need to do, it'll come from them and make the request to us. Yeah, those are the th that, that, that type of thing we have, we have to work out right. with Derek. And, and, uh, but yeah. You know, I can make a comment, Bill Franker yes. Adams Township, that uh, I'd like to echo. I, I think the meeting last Thursday was, was great. I, I had a lot of information back and forth on that, too. And, uh, you know, and, and to echo a little bit of what Ken's saying, that as far as the privates, when we started with our private service, there was a lot more privates out there, and they are drying up. It's just you know, a matter of the, 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 the business and, and you know, being able to retrieve the funds like they used to be able to do is not there anymore. So. Honestly, I think that's why uh, Adams, Green Springs, and, and Pleasant are, you know, forthwith and wanting to work with a countywide system because that is going to be the way of the future. So, that's, 
that's my two cents. Yeah. So, yeah. Thanks for your support. It's good. Okay. Anything online, uh, Jimmy? I think certainly, people can jump in if they wish. Not seeing anything right now. Okay. Okay. Let's uh, move on to new business, Mrs. Wilson. Uh, well, I just want to touch on old business okay. just for a second. Um, just following up from uh, the sheriff's request last week, I met with Diane and Lex uh, a couple times, had quite a few phone calls with them. Um, you know, after reviewing some of the bills, there was quite, quite a bit of 2020 bills that lingered over into 2021. Purchase orders were closed or didn't have enough funding in 2020. We were not aware of, they were not aware of. So what they had to do is use uh, part of their uh, 2021 budget to get that court order to get 2020 paid for. So they, they started out the year um, a little under the eight ball because, you know, they had to use their funding for 2020 bills. You know, they were not really aware of that. We were not aware of, aware of that. Um, that's must have been just kind of a... a how it fell, we just didn't have enough money in their lines to get the bills taken care of. And there was at least 10,000 in contract services. You know, we had uh, three, 4,000 in uh, repairs. So, you know, he does need additional money in those lines. You know, a couple of them are the new contracts, but he's got just in repairs that need to be paid. Most of the repairs are uh, tip and forward. I think he got all the cars in, you know, just to try to, he's coming in square one, you know, want to get the cars in, get them checked out. And there was just a few more things wrong with them. You know, obviously you take them to a dealer, they tell you what's wrong with them. Sheriff wants them to be safe. So he's got about 5,000 that are due, that are outstanding now that we have, we have to pay. And they're down to, you know, 3,000 left in their contract service line and their repair line they're only they're down to about eight eight hundred dollars left okay. so so we we said last week we just want to take a deep breath take a look at what was left right as I recall we approved about twenty one thousand yep. last week and there were about ninety thousand dollars in requests total yep okay I, I I reviewed all those and had some conversations with you and I'm comfortable with approving the rest of them at this point based on line by line review okay and I can add them to the, as I run through the rest of them, that way if you have any other questions, if that's what I, I, I need I'm to happy to have this question. Yeah, that's good. No, we can add Okay, them. all right. Let me go back to, because I do have copies of all the bills that are outstanding, so. We are less physically <laughs> fatigued this week. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. And, and, and Lex. Well, I don't love it. But yeah. Lex said she will get him under control for next year's budget wow. and this won't happen. That's what she told me. She's very nice. I, I like working with her. Diane's wonderful. So They keep um, me in line. They do. They do. Lex just wasn't on board at the first of the year, right. so she couldn't, she couldn't keep him on track then. Okay, so um, I've got the request for contract services for the sheriff, uh, 36000 Um jail services yep and then I have a supplemental appropriation for a contract repairs for 20,000 um, I have uh, an additional uh, 20,000 into software licensing and service and this is I mean as I've said before um, when we went entered into budgets last year uh, we had our budgets approved. The auditor des decided with some guidance from the state auditor that we needed to separate our contract services with our software services. So um, that's why we created the software services license and some of those bills were paid off contract services that the auditor is making her correct. Okay. So, so um, that's it and what was left? Um, let's see. Uh, do you want me to just run through all the new business or you want to keep those separate? No, no, I, I think we could run through all the new business. If anybody wants to okay. carve anything out, they can. We want to make the motion. So okay. theoretically, when you separate contract services with software, if, if you didn't, if we didn't add anything, right. it would be the same amount of money. Should have been, yes. Okay. Yep. So, but what we did is we did add a few things. I'm just I'm looking at the sheriff reminding me. He did add a, add a few software services right yes okay 
So maybe if you can cut a few contract <coughs> services, that would be. We are working on that. Um, actually, we have a meeting next week with all the people in, in the um, office. But some of those things that need to be done was like the scheduling software. Yeah. It was a nightmare before that because we went over it. And, right. and yeah, you just just keep telling us. We are. Items. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Back to you. Okay. So I've got a supplemental request from uh, regional planning. This is for the um, this is for her revolving loan fund, needing an additional fifteen hundred and other expense this is for the program income admin fees uh, they receive more payoffs and chip loans than usual and this covers the administrative fees for those payoffs um, I, I'm just not sure how chip funds affect revolving loan fund um, I thought I, I thought that was yeah chip is different let me go back to her description I think the fee was be 20% that might be. I mean, it's fifteen hundred bucks. I'm not going to dwell on it, but yeah. it seems to me that the revolving loan fund is totally outside chip money. Um, and I don't know if Charlene is on the call or not. That's just what she has in her um, description. Yeah, that just repeat received more, and maybe the description is wrong because the fund she's using is the revolving loan fund. Okay, there. I'm here. Oh, there she is. There you go. Hey, Charlene. Hey. Um. So when chip funds are paid back to the county, with, they are put into the housing revolving loan fund. So it's not the economic development revolving loan fund. Those are two different things. Okay. Um, that's the terminology that's used on both of them because the money revolves in and revolves out. So we have received um, quite a few payoffs for chip mortgages and we collect a small administrative fee for that but we've collected more payoffs than we typically do, so we need to allocate more funds for those um, payoff, for those administrative fees. That's all it is, just two different types of revolving loan funds that we administer. And, and I know it's muddy, it's chocolate milk, but that's the best way I can explain it. Okay, Good. Thank you. Um, I have a request. This is from our office. Uh, we needed an additional 15000 in other expense. When we did the budget through 2021, we only budgeted enough for High Bridges contract until the end of their contract. So it has an automatic renewal. So we're bringing this to add the additional for the remainder of the year. Um, we assume we probably should have put it in the budget, but we only budgeted for what we had contracted at the time. Sure. And what is that per year? Do you know? Thirty. It's twenty five hundred a month. Yeah, thirty thousand per year. Uh, my next supplemental appropriation is at the request of Common Pleas. Um, it is a twenty five thousand three hundred seventy eight dollars and fifty cents into their transfers outline. Um, they are going to transfer that to the uh, TCAP fund to help cover the cost of the GPS uh, electronic monitoring. Uh, it's allowable under their special projects fund, so they're going to transfer that out to the um, TCAP and help out them. Um, let's see what else I got. Um, I have a request at the sheriff's office, um, the concealed carry. Last week she asked for 20. She got the quote like the same day we did the sub app and it ended up being 22. So she needed an additional 2,000. Again, that's in the concealed carry handgun fund. Um, and also for the sheriff talking to Lex, uh, I think on the agenda it said 40,000. After talking to her, she had another purchase order open that she she didn't know Diane had it opened it. Um, they've recalculated with gas prices going up. She said gas alone is going to be probably 30000 to the end of the year. So they're requesting twenty five. And I, I've seen the supplies and um, they spent a lot more this year. I can't really compare it to last year with COVID because not a lot was spent last year. But we were at the year before is about 114 and we only gave uh, the sheriff, I think, 100 this year. So. That would I say be something about that? Oh, yep. Yeah. Go ahead. So since coming in, obviously, sure. um, uh, the gas prices have gone up. Uh, 
Um, I am working, uh, I have a meeting next week uh, to help with, with some of the gas prices. I know what I've talked to you in the past, yeah. the plan A, plan B, plan C thing. Uh, so uh, we actually are going to, and I'll be able to bring better information to you after the meeting next week that we can get it at a lower, lower rate. Um, through, the, through the rest of the year immediately, but then still work on uh, tanks or, or something down down the road. So I'll, I'll bring that uh, to you uh, probably at the end of or either next week's or the following week. Good. Okay, well, since we got the charger here, how much more expensive is an electric chair? <laughs> What's that? How much more expensive is a share of electric truck? An electric truck? Well, I'll tell you, uh, I can give you some numbers next year because one of the things that I've got with the um, uh, three vehicles still that we have left coming, uh, I have a hybrid Explorer coming. So it's five to six miles better per gallon than the, uh, the, than the regular one. So we'll be able to run some numbers on that for, for you next year. But we're, we're moving in that direction. But the, the electric is very expensive. Yeah. Uh, new. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. But we're moving in a good positive direction. So what's the number? It goes from 30 or? 25,000 into the supply line. Okay, thanks. And then I have a resolution authorizing the fund transfer be made to the target community alternative. Um, it's the actual the special projects fund into the TCAP fund for $25,378.50. Um, I have a resolution designating the dis depositories for Seneca County public funds for active and inactive monies for a four-year period commencing September 1st, 2021. As Paul explained, U.S. Bank, Fifth Third Bank, Huntington Bank, First Bank of Tiffin, and Old Fort Bank Company. I have a resolution entering into a participation agreement with the County Commissioners Association of Ohio. Um, and West Publishing Corporation on behalf of the Seneca County Department of Job and Family Services. Rejecting all bids received on Thursday, July 22nd, 2021, for the capital improvement at Crossway Facility. Are we for two? Oh, 0 for two. And so they, do it again. they're going to redo it again. So I have a resolution yeah. setting time, date, and place to receive sealed bids for yes. capital improvements at the Crossway Facility. Um, they are, I think, literally splitting every project they want into a, a separate category so they can pick and choose and hopefully doing it that way um, a vendor that doesn't want to do painting but wants to do can do the just making this up plumbing that we can get two different bids instead of you know one vendor having to bid for all which a vendor will be able to do that as well okay. so the bid is set for august 26 2021 at 10 30 a.m here at the commissioner's office Okay. And I think that's all I have. Your pleasure, John. Well, I'll make a motion that uh, we approve uh, the new business that Stacy has outlined. Second the motion. Okay. Any additional discussion? Very none. Kyla, you're up. <coughs> Commissioner Shaw? Yes. Commissioner Paradiso? Yes. Commissioner Kirshner? Yes. Okay. The time has come for public comment. Let me make the announcement, I guess. Sure. Uh, if you are joining us on <coughs> Zoom, you can go ahead and come forward now. If you're on Facebook Live, make sure you go up to the Zoom call. You can speak to us here through the internet, the magic of the internet. Good morning. Uh, Audrey Flood from TSAP. Uh, just a couple things today. Just another reminder again, we do still have money in those business grants. We have been able to connect many businesses with that application so far, so that's great. Um, keep them coming. Several of you have sent people to us, so keep those coming. Um, the only announcement we've made since last week is the ABR did approve several downtown projects with the facade enhancement funds uh, in Amy's department, so that's great. We're excited to see that. Um, and uh, we've had a great week uh, bringing in several new rural business projects that we're working on that we hope to be able to make public and announce soon. So um, nothing else really from us other than we do continue to do a lot of work on broadband, so um, we're happy to be supporting in that department as well and doing a lot of communication with 
the townships, the villages, and the rural school districts on behalf of trying to move that initiative forward as well. Um, any questions uh, for TSEP, any of the rest of our team, or myself today? Good job. All right, thanks, thanks guys. Yeah, no, thanks, I can be in there. I see you everywhere. You're working hard. <laughs> Keep it up. I see Hallie's uh, face on the screen. I know Jimmy. You Good morning, that. everyone. Happy Thursday. Good morning. <laughs> Sorry, I'm not in person. I'm about to head into another meeting. So just brief update from uh, OSU Extension. We have Attica Fair this week. We've been busy running around like crazy. Uh, friendly reminder for farmers in the area, um, if you guys are interested in the H2 Ohio program, uh, Seneca County is now eligible, uh, or sorry, Seneca County farmers are now eligible to set up the self that register for that program. I'm sorry they'll need to visit the uh, Soil and Water Conservation District. So same building that I'm in just downstairs, uh, that sign up is going on now. Uh, do it soon, do it quick, because uh, that money will run out quickly. Uh, that's new 10 counties that are uh, being brought into that program this year. So that's really exciting. Um, some bad news in the ag community uh, throughout the state. Uh, three brothers were in a very tragic uh, methane accident on a farm all three in their 30s or so lost their lives earlier this week uh, so a friendly reminder to all of our producers who are working uh, with larger operations especially with dairy or hogs um, we really need to be careful when we're working around um, our com combustible kind of areas our green bins anywhere that could uh, possibly cause suffocation or a sudden uh, poisoning uh, to just be really careful. Uh, it really sucks to hear about uh, ag safety accidents taking young lives. Um, so a lot of the ag community is kind of being shocked uh, by that accident. They're not close, uh, not close to us, closer to St. Henry area, Ohio, uh, but big um, dairy farmers that it's really hard to hear that news today. So us in ag are uh, warning, but also trying to figure out what are some ways that we can make sure that we're getting that news out to our farmers uh, to remind them that we gotta be safe and we gotta be careful and we can't always run in after a family member when accidents happen because we could lose others too. So sorry for that, um, you know, somber notice, but uh, important information that we need to have too. But aside from that, nothing too else crazy going on with extension. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Anything else? I don't see anybody else. Um, Spencer is on, but he has to go at 11. If there's any questions you would have for him, I just seen his message that he has another meeting at 11. Okay. I didn't think we'll you guys had to, any we'll questions. We'll off the hook today. <laughs> Spencer, you're good. <laughs> Uh, so I will accept the motion to go into executive session for contract negotiation. Collective bargaining. Collective bargaining. So moved. <coughs> Second. Uh, we do not expect to have any information for you when we're done, but you never know. So uh, take a roll call if you will, please. Commissioner Schuff? Yes. Commissioner Paradiso? Yes. Commissioner Kirshner? Yes. Yeah, yeah. We don't even have a table in the back anymore, do we? Yeah, we do. Mm -hmm. yeah. I set it up for you. You're good. <laughs>
Okay, I will accept the motion to come out of executive session. 11-10. 11-10, yes. That's so moved. Second. Okay, roll call. Commissioner Schaff? Here. Commissioner Paradiso? Here. Commissioner Kirshner? Yes. Is it a here or yes? <laughs> yeah, you can be yes, a no, maybe. maybe. You're an Aye. elected official, you can say anything you want. <laughs> okay, uh, it is 11-11 and we are adjourned. OTD.